Conducting a Glasgow Coma Scale assessment on an infant and child can be challenging. Infants and young toddlers are pre-verbal, affecting your ability to assess the verbal portion. They are not able to follow commands to open eyes, squeeze your fingers, or wiggle their toes, affecting the eye and motor portion of the assessment. Remember that the child's perspective is very different from yours and can be scary. Many toddlers and preschool children are afraid of strangers they are encountering in the code room, eliciting crying and screaming. These same children use coping mechanisms in stressful situations, such as refusing to open their eyes or refusing to speak during the assessment. Uncooperative children can be tricky. For young children, they may interact with something that jingles or lights up and may open their eyes to see them or reach for them. Your badge could even be of interest. For infants, they may interact after hearing a noise like silly sounds or snapping of fingers. For stable kids who refuse to talk, letting the parents be the person who tries to talk to them might help. It is your job to decipher if what we are seeing is a neurologic deficit versus an expected childhood behavior. Older children and teenagers have the ability to verbalize and follow commands, allowing you to perform the GCS assessment as you would with the adult patient. This video will provide you with the steps to perform an accurate assessment of GCS in the infant, child, and adolescent. To assist in the GCS assessment, there is a GCS table differentiating assessment between age groups. The GCS poster can be found hanging on the wall of each code room. And in the back of the resident handbook. The GCS will be conducted as part of the disability section of the primary assessment along with the pupil assessment. We ask that you utilize the GCS poster hanging on the wall during each assessment calling out each section's score loudly according to your assessment. It is not necessary for you to add up the total score. This will be done by the charge nurse in the room and summarized by the surgical coordinator. To start, determine if you will be using the infant, child, or adult section of the poster. We suggest using the infant section for all pre-verbal children and children with limited verbal ability. Since children develop at different paces, it is hard to predict an exact age. However, you can expect to use this scale on children ages zero through two years. Somewhere between two and three years of age, children will have enough verbal skills and ability to follow commands that will allow you to move to the child assessment section. To use the child section, the child must be verbal with the ability to follow simple commands. We suggest using the child section for ages three through six. Around a child's sixth birthday, they should have the verbal and mental capacity to hold a conversation. If a known developmentally delayed child presents to the code room, the appropriate assessment section is based on their baseline verbal and mental capacity. The adult section can be used on the older child and adolescent who is able to verbalize and follow commands. The eye-opening response sections are the same in all three categories. Normal infants and children of all ages should open their eyes spontaneously due to the nature of the chaos in the code room. If eyes do not open spontaneously, lean into the child, speaking loudly, state the child's name, and ask for them to open their eyes. The neurologically intact patient should open their eyes. If eyes do not spontaneously open to voice or touch, it will be necessary to inflict pain to elicit eye opening. We will discuss techniques to elicit a pain response under the motor section. Note, if a child is purposefully keeping his eyes closed, he will usually have a scrunched up face and it will be difficult for the examiner to open the eyes with their fingers. The verbal score has the most variance between age groups. For the child who is pre-verbal or has limited verbal abilities, cooing or babbling equal a score of a five.
In the code room, it is normal for children to cry due to fear and the chaos of the room. In the crying child, identify if the child is consolable. The ability to console is the difference between a score of a four and a three. The severely head injured infant will have an inconsolable high pitched scream. The pitch of the scream is another clue to the neurologic assessment of the child. Infants and young children who are not at baseline and are not crying are of great concern. Assessing verbal response in the child focuses on the ability to state appropriate words. Stating ouchie if something hurts, identifying mama, saying no are all appropriate words for age and the situation in the code room. This use of appropriate words equals five. Inappropriate words are similar to identifying disorientation in the adult, but for the child, it is a word that is incongruent to the situation. Inappropriate words would be scored a four. As with infants, if the child has persistent cries and screams that are inconsolable, a score of three is given. If the only verbal effort is a grunt, the child is given a score of two. No verbal effort equals a score of one. Note, if a child is purposefully not talking, he will usually have a scrunched up face and may have other avoidant behaviors as well. The motor assessment between the infant, child, and adolescent is very similar. Normal spontaneous movement equals a motor score of six in an infant. In the child and adolescent, normal is categorized as following commands. The ideal command is asking the patient to show two fingers. This demonstrates the ability to comprehend and execute the command. Do not show two fingers to the patient to help them understand the command better, because then you will not be able to tell if they truly comprehend the command or if they are just mimicking your movement. Another example of a command is to ask the patient to grip and release your fingers. The release of your fingers is the actual command as grip may be driven by reflex in the patient with neurologic injury. For a motor score of five, the infant withdraws to touch, whereas the child or adolescent localizes to pain. In this category, the infant will attempt to squirm away from touch. For the child or adolescent, localizing to pain is the ability to identify the location of the painful stimulus and attempt to stop it. Often the patient will cross an upper extremity over the midline. Withdrawing to pain is a score of four in all age categories. This is the limbs pulling away from the site of painful stimuli. Flexion and extension to pain is posturing. Flexion is decorticate posturing characterized by adduction of arm, internal rotation of shoulder, pronation of forearm, wrist flexion. Flexion to pain is a motor score of three. Extension is decerebrate posturing, characterized by limb extension, abduction, rotation of shoulder, pronation of forearm, wrist extension. Extension to pain is a motor score of two. A question that often arises in the GCS assessment of an infant or child is how to elicit a pain response. The answer is simple, the same way you would do it with an adult. There are several options, including applying pressure to the nail bed, trapezius squeeze, sternal rub. One more time, applying pressure to the nail bed, trapezius squeeze, external rub. The GCS is assessed during the primary survey. The GCS should be reassessed at minute five of the trauma resuscitation and again prior to the patient leaving the code room. Additional GCS assessments should be done if there is a notable change in mental status. It can be difficult to obtain a good GCS in infants and children. For best results, use the GCS poster in the code room. When in doubt, ask for help. The senior surgical resident, fellow, or ED physician in the room can work with you to get the most accurate GCS assessment.